Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and we're going to be talking about the consumer goods, manufacturers, and agriculture and kind of what the strategy is for these. In order to do this, we're going to need to talk about a lot of different topics. We're going to be talking about our different motivations for uh, kind of, you know, evaluating these industries and what we should be doing in regards to them. Uh, we are going to, of course, be consulting the master spreadsheet, all hail, uh, our spreadsheet, which is uh, telling us which PMs are most efficient in terms of specifically uh, uh, construction efficiency uh, in terms of uh, how much they are giving to the investment pool per construction this is really the number we care about and this is kind of we're not going to cover too much about the spreadsheet itself but this is what we care about here we'll also of course needing to be consulting quite a lot um, the needs table in the wiki which is not something that's available in the game and even in the wiki they say someone in here that uh, you know the behavior in the game does not necessarily match this and so we're left at a bit of loss and there's a lot of confounding variables whenever you talk about stuff but this will be kind of a good uh if it, even if it's not exact it's going to be a good for kind of helping us uh evaluate things um we will also be talking about jumping back into the game uh we will be talking about food industries in general uh kind of where you want to be getting your food from and this sort of thing we will be talking about agriculture uh in general and also as it relates because it's both a source of food and it's a source of luxury goods but more on that later and there's also replacement goods on both of these uh, that are not agrarian used and so this kind of affects our strategy we'll be talking about furniture uh, versus clothing and why furniture even though it has better pms in terms of efficiency is generally inferior relative to clothing uh, we'll be talking about the glassworks in porcelain and how glass is kind of an interesting good because it's used both for construction i.e industrial uses as well well as the porcelain and the glass itself uh, for uh, the consumption of pops or by pops uh, as consumer good and so this is a bit interesting uh, we will also be talking about the electronics industries kind of briefly uh, which kind of features a bit of an interesting idea which is that you don't always want to get goods cheap uh, and the electronics industry is an example of one because their uh, their PMs are generally not very efficient and so you can never get them as cheap as you would like if you're you know looking at an equilibrium of uh, price efficiency and then finally, we're going to talk about obsessions and taboos, which is generally important uh, for kind of looking through goods. Okay, so let's get into it, and we're going to be in game for the first discussion, which is there's really two motivations for kind of evaluating what goods you want to produce. And that is, first of all, uh, we care about the investment pool transfer. Um, this is one of the really strong mechanics in the early to mid game, uh, and we want all of our construction to be building buildings um, that have as high... Uh, a percentage or as high a contribution uh, to the investment pool per construction as possible and as much as possible in terms of what we're constructing we want to be building these buildings so an example is sulfur is extraordinarily efficient all hail this short guy but sulfur is extraordinarily efficient uh, in terms of the PM and so we would want to build all of the sulfur ourselves and import other stuff that's less efficient and this informs our strategy Another thing that is informing our strategy regarding consumer goods is what they are consuming and pushing up SOL. And I think it's just kind of important to talk a little bit about SOL. Um, so standard of living is different than income in a way that is you first have to run it through both taxes and needs. Um, so you have this income. We have an income of 8.3. Uh, we have a percentage that we're getting taxed. And then we have a percentage that's going to our needs. This is all of the consumer goods. And if there is less than 100, if these two add up to less than 100, if we have an Excess, then our standard of living will trend up. Now, standard of living is uh, what determines migration. If we come into this migration thing, we'll see attraction is one of the big major modifiers is standard of living. So this will determine how many pops you can attract. And so increasing the standard of living is important. Now, if these goods are cheaper, uh, in the market, then that means less money is required to fulfill needs, which means you can push SOL up. And so this is kind of just important. If we Getting goods that are consumer goods in the market is good uh, because it will make all of these, uh, it will increase your standard of living, which will increase your migration. However, it is bad um, on the sense of if the price of clothes is cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, our clothing industries will be less and less and less profitable. And so, um, and this will decrease, you know, the investment pool transfer, right? Because uh, the investment pool transfer is based on the dividends of the building. If the building's making less money, then it the, it will be getting less so here we have a weekly balance in our textile mills of 73k and we notice that we have you know goods and this sort of stuff um 
Something we can keep in mind, though, is we can increase, let's say, the price of the luxury good and then keep the price of the inferior good uh, cheap uh, such that, you know, you can increase the profitability while still trying to pump up the SOL of the lower rung pops. We're not really, this isn't really kind of a feature of this video as much, but it's just kind of important to mention and think about whenever you are making decisions regarding what you are building. It's not just, we are primarily going to be focused on the investment pool transfer, but this is not the only thing that is important. And so sometimes your strategy will involve making buildings less profitable for the sake of pumping up the SOL. And I just think it's important mention now let's talk about the spreadsheet real quick because uh it's important to kind of understand a little bit uh the way it is working so we're going to jump into the browser and talk about the spreadsheet so we got all these anonymous and these over here but talking about the spreadsheet the number we care about is the construction uh efficiency uh in terms of its contribution to the investment pool um this is the number we achieve by going to the net uh value which is the uh value of the output goods in terms of their base price minus the input goods by their best base prices which is how we get net it's important to emphasize that if the outputs are expensive in the market the net effectively will be even larger and if the outputs are cheap the net will effectively be smaller but we we take this net and then we multiply it or sorry we divide it by the amount of construction it takes to build a building notably textile mill takes three times as long to build as a farm um, and then we multiply it by uh, the ownership modifier in terms of investment pool contribution capitalists will contribute more to the investment pool than agrarians and so generally speaking as a strategy you don't want to use uh, you don't want to build as much agriculture yourself you want to import it in order to create your uh, sell orders and you want to do all of the manufacturing goods yourself um, just as a general heuristic okay next we need to briefly cover you know talking through this uh, this thing so first of all um, there is the needs type what all right here let's go into down here so there's different types of needs uh, in terms of how the needs work uh, and so there's temporary needs which these needs are appear in lower rung pops or are inferior goods and they will disappear as the pop grows up or becomes much more um, wealthy so if you see here for example simple clothing is an inferior demand and regular clothes is also one but at a higher rung you know uh, standard of living you will use fabric for clothes up until 14 SOL, at which point you will only use regular clothes up to 40 SOL, and then you will use only luxury clothes, or you will use luxury items of which some are luxury clothes, a minimum of 5% right here. And so this is important for processing and thinking about it. Um, notably, when we get to the grain, this is kind of the most significant one to think about, or the most significant good, that it becomes uh, an inferior good uh, later on. Um, there is also constant needs, which these do not grow up, um, and they just increase linearly uh, with standard of living. And this is heating and intoxicants. If your pops get super uber wealthy, they don't just randomly consume infinite supplies of opium. Um, okay. And then there's the exponential needs. And this is partially why you really can't get standard of living of like 80 or whatever. Because as you, as they get wealthier and wealthier, the amount they need in terms of luxury food, luxury items, luxury drinks, increases exponentially. You'll notice uh, we only need 16 uh, worth of luxury drinks at uh, wealth 16. And then at wealth 60, we need 3,387. And so this is going to kind of inform a little bit uh, what the top end of SOL looks like uh, and you have diminishing marginal returns in terms of the amount of goods required to consume and this is why your pops usually don't get too too high up although they can if they have enormous dividends but understanding these is important um, next we'll talk about uh, substitute goods so if you notice here there's a lot of other um, goods available here so for example we have grain here and fish here in basic uh, uh, food these are substitutes of each other. Um, according to the wiki, you can consume a max, unless it says otherwise, a max of 80% of one good, and then the rest will need to be achieved by a substitute. So here uh, we could substitute fish, we could substitute groceries, and then there's also this weight modifier the weight modifier pops want to consume much less of it if it has a negative weight modifier or if it has a positive weight modifier i.e over one they will want to consume more of it and there's also a cap on some of these in terms of how much they consume if it doesn't mention it the cap's 80 percent um important to emphasize in all of this though is that uh the price of the good matters so for example uh 
for food, we could consume two groceries or three fish and get the exact same effect because what we are doing in terms of satisfying the need, we care about price of the base good. And so we can, we will need to consume fewer groceries in order to satisfy the same demands as we could with either fish or grain because fish and grain are cheaper goods. Okay. So let's get into talking about stuff. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is agriculture and food. And we're gonna jump back into the game uh, for just a moment. And we're gonna talk about the investment pool uh, transfer because this is kind of uh, going to inform um, the way things go. So the weekly balance, um, in terms of dividends, these dividends are only 10% will go to the investment pool because the ownership of the building, if it's privately owned, is going to be aristocrats. Once you get on publicly traded, it changes a little bit and it'll be around 16.3% repeating if you have good conditions, which we're just gonna assume that you are. Um, on other buildings, so let's say if we come in here, the fishing wharves, um, this has a negative weekly balance, which is big sad, but the fishing wharves are all capitalist owned. And so they will contribute 29% of their investment pool uh, contribution, or sorry, they will contribute 29% of their dividends to the investment pool, roughly speaking, without unpacking the math. And so because of this, you just generally would prefer to not, uh, you want to, if you want, if you want orders of grain in your, uh, in your market, you would prefer to achieve as many as possible with trade routes uh, in regards to the grain. And if you were to want to achieve fish in your market, you would rather build them yourself. So jumping back into the goods, and we'll talk about basic food here, and then we'll talk about other agricultural goods, but this idea is important to understand kind of like moving into it. So let's jump back into talking about food. And so we'll see here that for the basic food, we have grain, fish, fruit, meat, groceries. We'll notice that uh, meat and f uh, f fruit have uh, negative uh, weight or they have bad weight. So pops will prefer to consume grain, fish, and groceries. Um, early on, a strategy, because you do not want to be building grain yourself, a very strong strategy is going to be actually leaning into fish, but just leaning into fish just very slightly. Uh, if we take a look at the PMs as well, um, we will see, like, let's say textile mill with dye workshops, we see the efficiency is uh, 9.7, and then you'll add another, if you go on a craftsman sewing, which you often will, you'll add about a, about a nar marginal nine. So it'll be around 18 in terms of efficiency. If we come into the resources tab and we look at fishing wharves in terms of what they're giving early on, with just fishing trawlers, they're giving 25 um, uh, net value uh, or value added per construction to the investment pool, which is really, really nice because the fishing wharves only take eight weeks to build on base. And so leaning into fish really early on is actually incredibly strong. Um, the reason it falls off is because the throughput, maximum throughput you can get in fishing wharves is incredibly low. But what a strong strategy can be is uh, going in your fishing and then or going into various places and just putting your fishing on auto expand um, so that it will expand once it becomes profitable and this will help to keep fishing uh, a lot of fish in the market or as fish becomes expensive and fish and grain are substitutes, you will build more of these and this will help to prevent your auto queue from constructing grain. And so this is a strategy, even if fish is maybe not the most absolute robust, um, this can be a strategy for early on depressing, you know, the price of, uh, or depressing the demand for grain because they are substitutes. If the fish becomes expensive, yes, if fish becomes expensive, people will just consume grain instead. And if grain is, if fish is really cheap and grain is slightly expensive, people will just consume fish instead. And so you can think of these as analogous because they are substitutes. Also, as you get into later on in the game and a higher percentage of your middling pops are start getting over SOL 30 here, you see this threshold, they will stop consuming grain because grain is an inferior good. And so often you will see a convergence of two things happen late game. First of all, the PMs for grain grid incredibly efficient. If we take a look here and we just look at the grain PMs, um, we're just gonna look at rye. We will see that, you know, simple farming, you know, we're putting out a little bit, a little bit, a whole lot more once we get onto fertilizers. Fertilizers is the biggest jump. And then on chem first, there's a e even bigger jump and our output is increasing by a huge amount each time. This output is mainly in grain or it's actually all in grain so we go from 600 uh 
you know, units or 600 value worth of grain. So this is going to be 30 uh, grain because it has a base value of 20 and to 1000 to 1800 to 2800. So at the same time, we're getting pops above this 30 line. We're also flooding the market with more grain. And so you really want to avoid grain specifically being constructed in your market. And so you can do this by importing grain, but also by building fish. Also, fish will uh, depress fish price by building a whole lot more of it will make groceries more uh, efficient. Uh, groceries consume both fish and grain, but the later PM of groceries will consume more fish. So you're setting yourself up for, you know, groceries later as well. And this can be just kind of a strategy you have for massaging the auto queue to con consume less grain. Okay, let's talk about the other arable goods or the other agricultural goods uh, that are used. And those are the ones that are in intoxicants and luxury demand, which we can see here. Uh, we will see that intoxicants demand is at the very least. You know, people will drink rather than eat sometimes. They'll drink rather than have a chair in their house. You know how it is sometimes, drink rather than clothes. Hell, why not? So um, also you'll notice max 60% instead of the normal base max 80%. Um, so they will consume liquor and you'll notice liquor here gets produced in two places. It gets produced in subsistence farms. Well, actually three places technically, cause it can get produced in, um, rye farms with the potatoes PM, but it, for the most part, it's either produced in grocers or it's produced in, uh, subsistence farms. And so this is an industrial good. It's an output of an industrial building, which as we covered before is preferable. So let's jump back into the scene real quick. We're going to find ourselves a, uh, food industry and we're going to talk about it so these food industries will have pms that produce more and more liquor so this is an industrial good if the liquor price is up then this will make these buildings more profitable and you will be able to build more of these and this is preferable and so what you want as a strategy you'll also see it's consuming a differing amount of grain and fish if we just take a look here um switching from jars to canneries will decrease the amount of grain consumed which you don't want to create great demand for grain in your market remember because if there's more demand for grain in your market your auto queue will build more of it and this is not preferable as we discussed um a, it will increase the demand for fish though so increasing the proportion of fish used which again fish are a preferred substitute because they are more uh how should I say, they are owned by capitalists instead of uh, by these aristocrats. And so this is kind of why going up on the PMs on food industries earlier or faster can be good. Um, but it's going to have this output of groceries and of liquor. So you would prefer your pops consume liquor. This can be a bit problematic with some pops because if we take a look, um, all Muslim pops, well, let's find some Muslims here. All Muslim pops will have taboos of liquor and wine. And when we jump back into the thing, we'll see why this is particularly bad because it forces you to go agrarian. So let's jump back into the browser and talk about this. So liquor uh, is one of the intoxicant goods, tobacco's another and opium's the third. Notice these two are both agrarian. And so if you don't consume liquor, you gotta consume tobacco and opium. And so you will prefer to import these, but opium notably can get very, very efficient later on. It is the most efficient PM in the entire game uh, in terms of its uh, net output divided by uh, its uh, construction. Um, but it only, it doesn't get to the absolute most efficient once you get on publicly traded, but it's extremely good. And so what the strategy is, especially if you're a Muslim country, Country or your Muslim pop is your primary pop, you will want to really go for opium, but going for opium in general can be good because if you go for a lot of opium, keep in mind opium, liquor, and tobacco are all substitute goods. This will decrease the amount of tobacco that gets produced in your market. And so if you, you it would be preferable that you are leaning on mainly opium and liquor for your intoxicants. And so this can kind of develop a strategy for that. For your luxury drinks, you will notice that it's tea, coffee, and wine. Uh, so for both of these, um, these are all agrarian goods, so it's unavoidable doing agrarian, but some are better than others. And we talked about in particular, the all of the, the grain crops will fall off pretty substantially. You will not experience a tall, fall off, you know, with the tea plantations specifically. And so it is preferable if you are going to try and massage the market. Uh, it is preferable that you have, uh, you import wine. 
uh, more so than coffee and tea. And it is preferable that if you are going to produce these, which again is not recommended because you would prefer to produce um, buildings that are more industrialist oriented. So for example, if we take a look, before we get on like publicly traded for the tea plantations, um, it's not going to be very efficient in terms of uh, the, this, so this is on automatic irrigation. And uh, if we don't have automatic irrigation and we don't have publicly traded, we're only contributing 12 uh, to the, or 12 12.5 per construction to the investment pool uh, in terms of the net output of the good per price. And if we just take a look at something like the chop chops, uh, just with regular sawmills, it's like 36. And so you don't want to be producing these goods. Um, but if you have to, it's preferred to go coffee and tea because um, the value or the um, output of the the price of wheat will absolutely plummet for reasons we discussed earlier, which is twofold. Um, one, the PMs get way more efficient, and so it's a flood of them later, but also as your pops get up, they just stop demanding grain entirely. And so wine you get from, you know, primarily from the best, most efficient one is from wheat farms. You do not want a ton of wheat farms to get constructed in your, in your place before, you know, these PMs get late, and then they get late, and then grain price just gets very depressed they don't they aren't profitable relative to if you were to have you know um tea or tobacco instead in the same spot so this is why um is preferable so we're talked about uh you know all the these are this kind of fills out all the agricultural goods here that we've talked about that's okay so the next thing we're going to talk about is furniture uh, versus clothing so often in the early game, you will want to, uh, you know, come in, you'll want to primarily focus on resources because they're generally the most efficient. And then you'll also want to focus on tools because tools are used in all the resource things. And even if they're not that efficient, you do get the best tool PM very, very early. Um, in uh, the tooling workshops, it'll be 19 in terms of its contribution to the investment pool, but eventually it becomes unavoidable and you just have to build uh, consumer goods. And then if we take a look, uh, you know, we'll see that early on we will be on, you know, workshops uh, also plus with the marginal of craftsman sewing so it'll be around 18 but if we take a look here we will get uh, you know or once we get sewing machines let's say um, before electric sewing this will be roughly 23 but if we take a look uh, luxury furniture furniture production plus mechanized workshops is more valuable at around 25 and so the question is is well wouldn't we want to build furniture then uh, during that inflection point in the game you know it is only until only in super late game once you get elastics that the textile mills become more efficient per construction and the answer is no but it's a little complicated why the answer is no it's better to focus on clothes and the reason why is the demand for clothes is overall uh, larger because this uh, simple clothing and standard clothing demand is much larger Larger. and uh, you see crude item demand and household item demand here. Um, this is relative in terms of uh, the what pops are actually demanding in terms of practice in the game, which the wiki doesn't show us. Um, the demand is much shorter. So let's just take a look at the population here and let's take a look at this tab and we will see, you know, clothing where is where most of their expenditure is and their furniture expenditure is about half that. The price of furniture is also particularly cheap Part of the reason why it's cheaper is also because the PMs are more efficient, by the way. So the equilibrium price will be lower if you are building just in terms of what's efficient and what's this sort of thing. Um, but you'll see more clothing, more clothing, and uh, not quite more clothing here, but this will be a very common theme. The reason you build clothing early on and you focus on clothing is because it'll be much easier for you to uh, have enough demand for it uh, in order to build it up and have a really large throughput bonus. And so it's about chasing the throughput bonuses early on, which you can't do as well with the furniture uh, because throughput is an incredibly strong mechanic. Um, this 80% we see here, uh, this is going to increase all the input goods uh, and it's going to increase all the outputs by the same percentage. And so this makes it like it's 180% of a building. But on top of that, you don't have to, this 80% does not increase the wages. So it also just becomes more efficient as a building and it will be easier to chase throughput with clothing um, than it is with furniture manufacturers, even though furniture manufacturers is more efficient. But if you are gonna export one, it is preferable to export furniture if you are trying to furnish a demand, ha ha ha, for it, uh, such that you can you know, try and build it taller. Although you're probably gonna wanna export both because chasing economies of scale bonus in the early game is really, really, really good. And so it's preferable to like export these and just produce more and this sort of thing. Okay. So that's kind of uh, talked a little bit about that. Let's jump back into the browser and talk more about the browser. 
browser. You'll also notice here there is a demand for fabric and for clothes, and once you get onto SOL of 14 and above, it will be just clothes. This is preferable because fabric is an agrarian good and clothes are an industrial good owned by capitalist owned buildings and so this is uh, kind of just a preferable thing you'll notice a similar kind of similar thing or it's a similar pattern with crude items but wood is actually capitalist owned so you don't really care about this but once you get over to household items you'll see that uh, you know there's furniture glass and paper but paper with a low weight which means we have to talk about glass because glass is a little bit of a unique industry here because it's used not just as a consumer good but also it's also used as a good inside for infrastructure or for building because if we see here uh well we're not on all steel tools but we'll see that steel uh frame buildings requires glass so glass will also be a good that you push demand for with construction and so very very often what will happen to the glass prices is the glass prices will become very high and the porcelain relatively speaking will become cheap um, you'll notice here the porcelain's just a little bit cheaper and so what this means is as far as luxury goods go um, often porcelain will be the most consumed and this is very fine um, in terms of what you're doing we 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 yeah, they didn't like us talking about the porcelain. They're coming for us. Um, but very often the best consumption tax in terms of the luxury goods will be porcelain. And you'll notice that here in the game, uh, if you're looking at porcelain versus luxury uh, clothes and luxury furniture, our pops are consuming more porcelain because the porcelain is relatively cheaper because we have such a high demand for glass. And this is really quite nice. Um, and you can also export porcelain and when you export porcelain, what you will do is you will lower your government, uh, you know, construction costs, which this can be something you want to do or maybe not something you want to do. But keeping in mind the profitability of this building influences how much will get uh, built in the auto queue. And you can push up the profitability of the building by increasing either the uh, price of porcelain or by increasing the price of glass. Uh, either one will do. And when you increase the price of porcelain by exporting it, you will decrease, you know, your construction good. And in terms of the inverse of this, you know, if you are wanting more to stimulate your economy and SOL, you can do the reverse where you export glass and don't export the porcelain, which will depress the price of porcelain, relatively speaking. And this will allow your pops to uh, buy it for cheaper, which will increase the standard of living. Because remember, when the goods are cheap, you need to spend less on needs, which will cause a bigger excess, which will raise standard of living. And so glass is an interesting one because not only is it, uh, you know, produced uh, in, uh, it produces both for industrial as well as consumer goods. Now we're about to talk about luxury goods in general. So for luxury goods in general, all of them have two outputs and one of them is luxury and one's, uh, uh, you know, simple, the simple item in general, if you're going to export just one, I think you should just export both. You should push up this, um, and just make the building more profitable as a general heuristic. But if you're going to export one, it's preferable to export the luxury item, make the luxury item more expensive because this will make this other item cheaper, relatively speaking, while allowing the building to maintain similar profitability. And so this will make your lower run pops have a higher standard of living, which Overall, this number or this standard of living is going to be what's important for, you know, kind of pushing up migration more so than anything else. And so this is the same, it's the exact same pattern for the furniture manufacturers. And so we'll jump back in in a second and just take a look at it. But where, once we find a furniture man, oh, we have some here, I think. Yes, this is where our 50, notice we're building a lot of things above 51 for max throughput. Um, this is not like a throughput video though here, but you'll see two outputs and we have the luxury one is a little bit more expensive and this one's depressed and this will overall increase sol of the lower run pops but it's the same shtick so let's jump back into the browser and take a quick look at it uh because you know we love looking at the browser and so we will see for luxury items um you know there's a minimum of five percent at a bunch of these except for radio and there's a max of 40 percent so it will be a relatively even split but what we had there in byzantium is we had the pops probably consuming close to 40 percent on porcelain and then less on these because we are pushing the demand for glass which is causing porcelain to be a cheaper good and so they are preferring this notice all of these are substitutes and so they will consume whichever is cheapest um, and kind of they should all kind of reach a relatively same uh, equilibrium uh, price relative to their base price and then later you can introduce radios but we'll get back to that in a second 
Okay, actually, let's get into it now. So electronics industries, you'll see that radios are here and also telephones are here. And telephones are here with a really low weight in the communication uh, tab thing. Um, they're with a really low weight here relative to services and transportation. And so let's just kind of quickly talk about telephones and the electronics industries. And the unfortunate fact is the electronics industries, or we have them in here, the electronics industries just aren't very efficient. And so because these aren't very efficient, these will uh, always tend to be relatively expensive because the industry cannot be as profitable um, with a lower uh, IPT uh, per construction or a lower net value added per construction. And so these goods will always be relatively expensive. And so uh, you can't like produce a whole bunch of radios to decrease demand for other luxury goods that efficiently, but they will take the edge off a little bit. Um, also, if you're consuming a ton of telephones, in all your government buildings, then you can actually depress the price of radios, right? Because the electronics industries outputs two goods, right? And if you are, you know, consuming or producing enough of them in the electronics industries, I don't know why I'm coming in here because we don't even have electronic industries yet. Um, but if you produce enough um, telephones such that telephones become expensive, again, it's a too good type of thing with telephones and radios. If radios become really depressed, then that doesn't ease the demand for other luxury goods. But there is the communication thing, which um, all other things equal, man oh man, will your pops really prefer consuming phones for communication rather than um, services or transportation. Okay. Um, so let's briefly kind of talk about all the ones we didn't talk about, uh, which is heating uh, and services and free movement and art okay um so for heating you'll notice uh it's pretty universal it's uh just kind of flat across again they talked about heating it's a uh, constant need here and the heat will kind of always be what they need and they will just consume whatever's cheapest relative to base price out of wood fabric coal iron uh, or sorry iron oil <laughs> can't heat a house with an iron or and electricity, um, notably electricity has a higher weight. So once you get electricity, they'll tend to consume this for heating, um, which means that if you have uh, a bonus um, with that allows you to produce electricity, this will benefit the SOL, uh, in addition to just generally being really valuable because electricity is not an exportable good. So for example, in New York, they have this modifier 20% electricity output, which will help to decrease heating costs, for example, because heating, it has a higher weight and you'll also be able to produce it cheaper when you have more output because this it just you just make more of the good with uh, no ex additional inputs so it's even better than throughput which is insane um yeah new york's just an insane state but uh coming back into it this kind of just briefly on the heat uh services is pretty straightforward they just demand services and uh, notably i do believe it is an increasing it is exponentially increases and so you will often get a really depressed services price uh if your sol is kind of low and then as sol kind of climbs the service price can come back up um for the service industries you of course have the urban centers which have a bit of an interesting thing in that uh they don't require any construction so we can't evaluate it on this like you know per construction basis thing but for the most part you will all of these are efficient right they take less value of inputs and they have it to outputs and they will just seek equilibrium employment and all of them are uh you know increasingly uh efficient in a general sense or their margin here the net is larger and larger and larger each time and so what you will want to do is you will want to just uh, use the latest and greatest PMs uh, for all the urban centers uh, as long as you don't have some weird uh, shortage that it causes and then it'll just reach equilibrium employment on the basis of this and you don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, I, maybe I need to do a deeper dive on this and maybe there's a strategy for subsidizing this because it's not an exportable good but this is kind of what I think of it right now with uh, you know asterisk that I might be wrong but I don't think I am. Uh, um, You'll see that uh, they do consume, uh, once they get to above 14, they will consume uh, transportation and automobiles and services with a small weight, but it'll be mainly transportation. This helps to decrease your subsidies. Um, and you'll notice the subsidy you pay if you have like a ton of pops, like if your average SOL is like b below 14, you'll notice that you uh, will start to pay quite a lot in subsidies as long as that stays low. And so this can be a reason to try and increase SOL overall uh, so that they start decreasing the subsidy. Um, just some food for thought, but generally they don't really consume a lot of automobiles. Automobiles are really expensive. And then we have art, um, notably, uh, this is only starts getting produced at above 30 SOL. Um, and so, and it will get 
you know, more of it can, will get consumed. It's an exponential need. Um, and so we'll just kind of something real quick to note. Let's jump in the game and talk about it. Is uh, when you uh, get onto... This is something that was pointed out to me by a viewer, and I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, when you eventually get onto publicly traded, this increases the number of capitalists, which will, uh, in terms of, it'll create more pops that are capitalists. It doesn't do a whole lot if the building's profitable um, and like uh, employed, fully employed and profitable. It doesn't do a whole lot in terms of t thinking about the building's dividends, but what it does do is it makes each capitalist have a lower standard of living, which will decrease their consumption of fine art. Um, fine art is notably a uh, kind of an inferior good. Let's kind of jump into why it is with our handy dandy spreadsheet. Uh, but. Uh, fine art basically just doesn't give anything uh, in terms of uh, or anything useful in terms of adding to the investment pool. What it does do that's useful is it hires a bunch of intelligentsia. And so this part of it is a little bit useful. Um, but other than that, uh, because it can increase the cloud of the intelligentsia, this sort of thing. But other than that, um, you would really prefer to have less arts academies because they really aren't stimulating your economy in a way that you like. Uh, they're also not particularly efficient on top of uh, having ownership that really doesn't contribute anything to the investment pool. Um, and okay. Uh, yeah, we won't belabor it. Uh, the art is bad, uh, and getting onto you know a demand profile uh, of this lower kind of standard of living will decrease the demand for art. It also demands services, but at a really low weight. So you'll notice when you have extremely rich capitalists, this will be what kind of prompts your fine art to be, um, you know, a ton of fine art to be consumed. And one thing you can actually do jumping back into the game and talking about things, is in terms of your consumption taxes, if you put in a bunch of consumption, what do we have? Okay, we have too much authority spent here to really make a point of this. But if you increase the consumption taxes of all what the richer pops consume, so for example, porcelain, luxury clothes, luxury furniture, uh, these types of things, what you will do is you will raise the tax on the upper strata, which will help to depress their standard of living below an equilibrium where they're consuming more and more fine art. If you notice ours, uh, the average wealth is 40, which is not insanely high. And you'll notice what they're spending 2.7% of their income on fine art. Uh, and you'll notice these guys whose average income is 21 aren't consuming, I think any fine art. Ooh, fine art down here at 0.0%. And so you can try and tax the upper rung pops more in order to avoid this inferior good of fine art uh, because it's you, you really don't want fine art buildings for the most part. If you are gonna have them, I think it's actually preferable to have them in the capital. Um, this is kind of something to note uh, for the photographic art or whatever, uh, because if they're in the capital specifically, uh, they are, you get plus 50% clout um, in the capital and this will uh, juice up the intelligentsia. So if you want the intelligentsia to have more clout, having your arts academies in the capital where there's a 50% bonus to clout is reasonable, but this is just, you know, kind of a bit of a tangential thing. Okay, let's jump back into it. I think we're just about done talking about stuff. Yeah, so we talked about services, free movement, art. We talked about all these. And so now, actually, just kidding, we don't jump in here. We jump in back into the game, and we're going to talk about the game. So, now we need to talk about taboos and obsessions. So, if a pop has a taboo or an obsession, so let's, we're, our primary culture is Greek, and we have obsessions with wine, meat, and tea. So, what will happen is, uh, these pops, our pops will consume these uh, at a greater rate than what would be best. So what will happen is, um, you know, if meat and uh, groceries are the same, or if meat is more expensive than groceries, they're substitute goods of each other, our pops will choose to consume meat anyways. And this is negative. So all obsessions and taboos, for the most part, are negative with some like asterisks and there's other things you can, it, it, I think you should generally think of them as negative, although uh, there are situations in which you can like kind of do some neat things with them. But what will happen is our pops will overconsume the meat, and this overconsumption of a more expensive product, when there's a cheaper uh, substitute good available, what this will do is it will increase the prices of their needs. Uh, for example, this meat here, this should be lower in terms of how much they're spending on it because there's cheaper substitute, good, substitute goods available, for example. And so what this will do is it will uh, pull down SOL. And uh, this is generally speaking a bad thing. And so you would prefer not to have obsessions, but sometimes you have obsessions. Um, 
we also have subs uh, obsessions with tea and wine. So as far as pops go, uh, Greek is not ideal because we all of our obsessions are with all these agrarian goods. We'll have to try and import more. Our pops will overconsume them. It'll lower their SOL. It's not preferable. And this is actually um, kind of an interesting thing in that uh, you can actually think of uh, assimilation in public schools as being negative. And the reason why is this will convert more and more pops to Greek. Uh, we would rather pops not get converted to Greek because, for example, let's take a look at the second most populous pop in our country, which is uh, Turkish. As a percentage, we have quite a lot of Turks. Uh, they have taboos of liquor and wine, so they will under-consume wine. They'll consume virtually no wine, which means, as far as strategy goes, you often can import uh, both liquor and wine from uh, these uh, Muslim countries and uh, have a very nice margin they don't uh, they have taboos for liquor and wine so this will depress the price of wine because they'll under consume it and so if you have uh, any taboos in your country you'll want to export those products unless you don't want to stimulate the economy of those things so you could in order to produce less grain for example put all your farms on grain production and then not export it if you're a Muslim country but they also have uh, taboo on liquor but this is kind of okay for us uh, because our primary pop Greek has an obsession with wine and so to some extent they'll cancel out because these guys will over consume it uh, these guys will under consume it okay um, you know you can see it would be preferable for us to have Bulgarian because then people would consume based on equilibrium and not be artificially moved in a direction but this is important to recognize for some of your countries uh, that you can also develop obsessions uh, if something is really really cheap and your pops just over consume it um, and this can happen with radios and it can also happen with porcelain these are the two most common one thing they can be obsessed with that it's really preferable for them to become obsessed um, with these goods uh, I haven't developed a strategy around trying to force obsessions um, but this would be preferable and this is just something to keep in mind or think about uh, so for us in particular we really want to try and be on top of importing wine meat and tea so that we do not accidentally encourage our queue to consume it especially because tea is not only an obsession of our greek pops but also of our turkish pops which is over 50 percent of our country but we can try and offset this by you know getting migration because what will happen is these guys will over consume this good but the bulgarians they will just lap up all the cheap goods that these guys are leaving on the table in terms of the greeks and the turks and so this is just kind of a way to you know think about it okay so I just want to summarize and uh, kind of go it through real quick. Uh, we're going to go through it in terms of, mm, should we go through it through the buildings or through the tab? I think we should go through it uh, through the tab and not through the buildings. And we'll just talk about kind of how to think about each uh, consumer demand uh, for each thing. So for basic food, uh, generally uh, producing grain is not preferred. And as a result, you want to import grain because it contributes less to the investment pool. Uh, however, producing a ton of grain will also increase your standard of living if you are kind of in this lower rung, but then it's an inferior good once your pops, especially your middling pops, get above 30 uh, SOL. So the strategy is don't produce grain, import grain, uh, produce fish to help depress the demand for grain because they're substitute goods. And eventually you want to start getting it on groceries. Notably, the later PMs of groceries will de demand more fish and less grain, which will help further this cause. Um, then kind of once you get into luxury food, you'll notice we have f uh, meat and fruit and both have max 40% as well as groceries. You'll want to produce a lot of groceries so that they're consuming 40% groceries but they're still going to consume 30% of each of these or some sugar with a little bit of a less weight but all of these are arable goods notably it would be preferred once you kind of get super late in the game that you have a lot more of these rather than grain because the grain uh, floods the market it depresses the price they're not very profitable etc mostly etc then we have simple clothing and clothes in general and it's important to remember clothes versus furniture you can generally push the economies of scale of clothes a lot faster and earlier because there's generally more demand so it is preferred even though the pms aren't better for a lot of uh the early game um this is just something to keep in mind uh furniture is relatively efficient glass is an interesting case because often the glass price itself will be uh relatively high and uh because you're using it for construction and so this will depress the price of porcelain so often porcelain even though on the in the early game it's not a very good consumption tax by the late game it is an extremely good consumption tax and so you'll want to kind of reevaluate 
evaluate later on. Uh, for heating, um, there's not much of a strategy other than electricity is preferred. And so if you can make electricity really cheap, it also notably has a max of 100%. Um, if you can make electricity really cheap, you'll increase SOL, and there are some provinces that can help you make electricity really cheap, so it's important to keep in mind. For intoxicants, uh, notably, um, the you have max 60% on these, and three of them, uh, and one of them is produced by a uh, capitalist-owned building, and the other two are produced by agrarian-owned buildings. And so you really want to kind of push the liquor price down, uh, if you can, in order to get them to consume this, um, rather than, you know, the opium and the tobacco. But you'll also kind of want to produce uh, opium to so that between opium and liquor, you can depress um, the demand for tobacco. Also which will cause your queue to build less of it. Also, this is a disadvantage of all Muslim countries. Um, you, Muslim countries won't consume liquor, and so this means you have to lean into the tobacco, so you for, you're forced to go more agrarian as a result of your taboos, which, as we talked about, are generally taboos and obsessions are bad uh, because they decrease SOL uh, because your pops won't consume at equilibrium levels. Um, then we talked about luxury drinks. You just have to bite the bullet. They're going to be agrarian produced, but notably, uh, wine is, I think, the... I believe it is less uh, the least efficient, so you kind of would prefer to push coffee and tea if you're going to try and push something. Then we talked about services and free movement and communication, all this sort of stuff. A notable detail in talking about fine art is having more capitalists from the publicly traded PM will decrease demand for fine art. Fine art is just like not a good you want to be producing like any of because the PM is not very efficient for giving you stuff to the investment pool, although what it will be efficient for is contributing clout um, to the intelligentsia, but that's kind of it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and have a good day. Where's the stop recording button?